On October 3rd, we commemorate a significant event that occurred 26 years ago. On this day, O.J. Simpson, a former football star, was acquitted of the brutal murders of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and waiter Ronald Goldman. These tragic events took place in California, specifically in Los Angeles. Decades have passed, yet the infamous crime remains unsolved. The mystery surrounding these deaths continues to intrigue people, sparking discussions and theories. Orenthal James Simpson, commonly known as O.J. Simpson, left an indelible mark on the National Football League NFL, during his 11-season tenure. One of the greatest backs in football history, won USC's second Heisman and its second in four years, while setting the NCAA single-season rushing mark in 1968. Born in San Francisco, Simpson graduate from Galileo High in 1965 as a star running back, defensive back, and track athlete. He attended City College of San Francisco for his first two seasons and was named a junior college All-American as a running back in 1966. He is also the first of three Heisman winners to attend junior college. In 1969, Simpson transitioned to the professional league, joining the Buffalo Bills. Initially, he faced challenges, but once the offense was tailored to showcase his running abilities, he excelled. Over his 11-season NFL career, primarily with the Bills, Simpson established himself as one of the greatest running backs of all time. His impressive achievements include five consecutive Pro Bowl selections and being named first-team All-Pro from 1972 to 1976. Notably, he led the NFL in rushing four times during that period, amassing a staggering 7,699 rushing yards, a feat unmatched by any other player within a 2,500-yard radius. Simpson's sensational 1973 MVP season remains etched in football history, as he became the first back to rush for over 2,000 yards in a single NFL season. In the late 1970s, as the echoes of roaring stadiums faded, Simpson stepped into a new arena, the glitzy world of Hollywood. The transition was seamless, as if the spotlight had been waiting for him. His chiseled features and magnetic presence made casting directors take notice. But it was more than just looks. Simpson possessed an innate charm, a charisma that transcended the boundaries of the football field. The celluloid reel embraced him. In Capricorn One, a science fiction thriller, he played an astronaut caught in a web of conspiracy. The camera loved him the way it captured his intensity, the subtle vulnerability lurking beneath the tough exterior. But it was the Naked Gun series that etched Simpson into collective memory. As Detective Nordberg, he navigated slapstick chaos with deadpan humor. His timing was impeccable, the punchlines delivered with a wink. Audiences laughed, and Simpson reveled in the applause. Yet, it wasn't just the big screen that beckoned. Those iconic Hertz commercials the ones where he sprinted through airports, suitcase in hand became cultural touchstones. The tagline, Go OJ, Go, echoed in living rooms, elevating Simpson to a pop culture icon. His face adorned billboards, and his name became synonymous with speed, agility, and adventure. But life isn't a highlight reel. Beneath the glamour, shadows gathered. The courtroom drama unfolded a real-life script that rivaled any Hollywood plot. The murder trial of his former wife, Nicole Brown, and her friend, Ron Goldman, cast a pall over Simpson's legacy. The verdict, a controversial acquittal split public opinion. Suddenly, the charismatic actor was enmeshed in a narrative darker than any film noir. Simpson, who had children with ex-wife Marguerite Whitley, married Nicole Brown in 1985. They had two children, Sidney and Justin. In 1992, Simpson and Nicole Brown Simpson divorced. Simpson's story is indelibly marked by his notorious car chase on June 17, 1994. That day, the world watched in disbelief as Simpson, a former football legend, led police on a low-speed pursuit through the streets of Los Angeles. The chase unfolded after Simpson was charged with the murders of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ronald Goldman. In a white Ford Bronco, driven by his friend El Cowlings, 
Simpson evaded authorities while millions of viewers tuned in to live television coverage. The slow-moving chase spanned freeways and city roads, capturing the attention of a nation. Ultimately, Simpson surrendered at his home, bringing an end to the dramatic pursuit. This surreal event remains an unforgettable chapter in both Simpson's life and the annals of true crime history. In 1995, Simpson's trial transfixed the country. During the trial, defense attorneys asserted that Simpson had been unjustly accused. In contrast, prosecutors contended that Simpson, as a controlling husband, had mistreated Nicole Brown Simpson. Their case rested on several key points. Blood evidence from the crime scene discovered in Simpson's car and home, and the curious fact that he remained unaccounted for for over an hour on the night of the killings. A pivotal moment occurred when the prosecution asked Simpson to don gloves believed to be worn by the killer, yet the fit seemed to miss a detail etched into the trial's memory. Defense attorney Johnny Cochran's famous closing argument to the jury was, if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. On October 3, 1995, Simpson was acquitted of all criminal charges. He has always maintained his innocence. In 1997, a civil jury found Simpson responsible for wrongful death in the double murder. Simpson was made to pay $33.5 million in damages to the Brown and Goldman families. In September 2007, O.J. Simpson orchestrated a daring escapade in Las Vegas. Accompanied by a group of men, he stormed into a hotel room at the Palace Station Hotel and Casino. Their mission? To reclaim sports memorabilia that Simpson insisted rightfully belonged to him. The stakes were high, and the tension palpable. The charges against him included kidnapping and armed robbery. This real-life drama unfolded against the backdrop of Simpson's tumultuous past a past that had already seen him acquitted of the infamous murders of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and Ron Goldman. Now, in a twist of fate, Simpson faced a new chapter, one that would lead to a conviction and a prison sentence. In 2008, Simpson was found guilty in the botched robbery and sentenced to up to 33 years in prison. As Judge Jackie Glass prepared to sentence him, she said to Simpson, earlier in this case, at a bail hearing, I asked, I said, to Mr. Simpson, I didn't know if he was arrogant or ignorant or both. And during the trial and through this proceeding, I got this answer, and it was both. Glass said of the crime, that was not a, oh, just give me my stuff back, I want my stuff. That was, nobody leave the room. That was actually a very violent event. At least one gun was drawn. The potential for harm to occur in that room was tremendous. When you take a gun with you, and you take men with you, to show, in a show of force, that's not just a, hey, give me my stuff back. I can't ignore that the behavior at the time on September 13th was reckless, she added. The law was broken. Simpson apologized in court for his actions, saying, I didn't know I was doing anything illegal. I'm sorry for all of it. Simpson was sent to prison. In 2013, Simpson's bid for a new trial was rejected, but he was granted parole that same year on some of the charges, based on good behavior. Simpson was not released from prison at that time, since his prison sentences were set to run consecutively. He had to wait until 2017 to appear again before the parole board. In July 2017, Simpson was granted parole, with an earliest possible release date of October 1, 2017. Mr. Simpson, I do vote to grant parole when eligible, and that will conclude this hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Simpson added, I haven't made any excuses in the nine years I've been here and not trying to make an excuses now. When asked if he believed that the property was his, Simpson replied, it's been ruled legally by the state of California that it was my property and they've given it to me. Simpson also reassured the board he would be successful meeting the conditions of his parole, saying, I'm not a guy who lived a criminal life. I had some problems with fidelity in my life, but I've always been a guy that pretty much got along with everybody, he said.